Elise Darling and this week I'm going to be doing cake pops on camera. It's been a really long time since I've made cake pops. It's something that I always say no to and then I had a bride and groom, lovely bride and groom, who wanted a wedding cake and then some cake pops to go next to the cake on the cake table at their wedding. So I was like, yeah, what the hell, it's been a while, I'll make some cake pops. So I thought, switch the camera and record it for you guys. It's changed a lot since I last made them, so I'll talk to all that as well. Now cake pops are essentially a mixture of cake and buttercream. When I made these way back in the day, the ratio used to be two parts cake to one part buttercream, which is a lot of buttercream, and everything was a bit soft. Sometimes the sticks didn't stay inside the cake pops. So now I just had all my cake crumbs, which for me were just from leftover cupcakes, but they could be cake trimmings or whatever you have left over. And I've just added in a couple of spoonfuls of buttercream. I wanted to err on the side of caution with this because as I mixed it together, I wanted to be able to feel if the cake crumbs were sticking together, I knew there was enough in there. If they weren't and everything was a bit crumbly, then I could add a little bit more. I found the easiest way to mix the buttercream into the cake was with my hands. Using a spoon, I just ended up with very crummy lumps of buttercream. So in order to get the buttercream evenly dispersed, I got my hands in there and mixed it all through like I would if I was making breadcrumbs. Now cake pops have come quite a long way since I last made them. So I knew there were some new tools available. So I got myself a cake pop scoop, which was kind of like a double-sided ice cream scoop. I could pick up a ball of cake with and I thought, well, that's handy. I'll just do that and I'll know they're all the same size. Of course, to make them all the same size, you could just use a normal ice cream scoop if you have a small one or weigh them out, which is a bit finicky, but probably worth doing if you need them all the same size. Now, what I found with this scoop is I could scoop up a ball, squish it together, and then when I pulled it out, it wasn't quite stuck together. So where the two halves had come together was almost a bit loose in the middle. So I used it to get the right amount, squished it further together with my hands and put it back into the ball and pressed down to squeeze out any excess cake pop mixture, which I then wiped away, opened it up again and pulled the cake pop out and it would leave a very perfect ball, all the same size. When I did cake pops before, I always used melted chocolate and I found that was fine to use. For this one, I needed a very pale pink, so I bought candy melts in the colour. I had some Wilton and I had some rainbow dust ones and I ended up using both of those because I used way more candy melts than I expected. They don't go very far, do they? So I melted the candy melts down as per the instructions. It took a really long time, a surprisingly long time to melt down. And for this step, I was just dipping the cake pop sticks into the candy melt mixture and then pushing them into the cake pops. The cake pop sticks I had were plastic ones. I think they were made by Colpit. I actually, when I ordered them, I thought they were like paper wooden uh, lollipop sticks, but they've turned out to be plastic, which is fine. I just probably would have preferred the wooden ones, but anyway. Once all my sticks were my cake pop balls, I then put them in the freezer. It was about 15, 20 minutes. I just wanted to make sure those candy melts are completely set inside and the cake pop sticks weren't gonna come out of the cake pops. When they came out of the freezer, I left them for about five minutes so they weren't completely freezing cold when I dipped them. And what I found was that my candy melt mixture was way too thick. It was horrible and gloopy when I tried to push my cake pop in. It was just leaving a really thick, heavy coating. So to counteract that, I added a tablespoon a generous tablespoon, just like an actual spoon that you would eat with, scooped a load of treks up on it and put it into my candy melt mix and then the heat of the candy melts where I just melted them, melted the treks and it thinned out the candy melts really nicely so it just made it a lot more runnier and when I dipped my cake pops in, it was a thinner, more even coating and it dripped off more easily than everything. So that's a really handy thing to know to do. So I dipped each cake pop, gave them a little shake and then one of the other new cake pop pieces of equipment I found was this cake pop stand, which has some little holes in which you can just stand your cake pops in. Now this is made by Kitchen Craft. I bought two of these because I had 30 cake pops to make. Hands down, one of the worst pieces of equipment I've ever bought in my life. And I'm so annoyed. I don't know if it's because they were plastic cake pop sticks. Like, I don't know what's to blame here. I haven't got any of the paper wooden uh, cake pop sticks or lily pop sticks to try in this, so I can't compare. But with the plastic ones, it was awful. Half the holes didn't work. They didn't even let me get the cake pop in. I'd have to really grip onto the stick and force it through the other ones, which I was then damaging the cake pops above. Like, it oh, it's just awful. Not a fan of these at all. I will keep part of them and try them with the wooden cake pop sticks in case that's the difference, but these just infuriated me. I personally would save the money and just use a polystyrene cake dummy, which is what I wish I had done in the first place. Now I do have a couple of troubleshooting tips, I suppose, just things to look out for because when I made them this time, I had two things that went wrong with these cake pops after I'd left them in the stand to dry. Now three of the cake pops cracked and they were some of the first ones that I did. So I think the mixture was still too 
cold from the freezer and as it's come back to room temperature it's expanded slightly and then cracked the candy melts around the outside. That's my theory anyway, they were the first ones. So therefore the coldest makes sense. So all I would have had to do there is just wait a few more minutes until they had not been so cold. Maybe 10 minutes next time instead of 5 minutes. And the other thing was where I dipped a couple of the cake pops, I had missed a, just a tiny little bit right next to the cake pop stick underneath the cake pop so it wasn't completely sealed in the candy melts. Now this leaked out what I think is butter because it's like a runny yellowy liquid so I think butter from the cake pop had uh, run out of there and drizzled down the side of the cake pop. It wasn't the end of the world because it didn't mark it but obviously we'd prefer that not to happen so I'd just say when you dip make sure the candy melts come right up to the lollipop sticks so everything is sealed in. So all in all cake pops weren't as bad as I remember but they are bloody time consuming. I probably won't make them again. I just think they're a lot of effort for not very much and because they take so long they end up costing a lot and I don't think they look like they're worth the cost if that makes sense and they are because it takes you such a long time to do them but to me it doesn't quite match up. So that is how I made cake pops after a very long seven to eight year break of making cake pops. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did please give it a big thumbs up and click that subscribe button. There are brand new videos every single Monday. If you're baking or cake decorating this week make sure you take photos, upload them to Instagram and use hashtag yesdarling and I will give you a shout out in my stories on Monday. As always thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next week.